I want to be positive. Let's be positive. Let's make change with positivity. And that's so lost nowadays. And I came across this creed. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. All right. This is called an American's Creed. All right. 163 words to remind us what it means to be an unkept citizen. So if you haven't heard about this, all right, this is from the 1950s. A liberal commentator, this is, of course, in the 50s, so liberal means something totally different, all right, don't get triggered, all right, who had a number of aborted runs for public office, wrote some of the most important words in modern American political discourse, words that should have, ha uh, should have an impact if, uh, as we evaluate the totalitarianism or totalitarian approach to the Western world has undergone in response to COVID-19 pandemic. Dean Alfange, a progressive and labor activist, wrote the following 163 words as first published in Reader's Digest in 1952. All right, now I want to read this. This is beautiful. All right, and this is some of the things that I've been talking about over the past couple months. It's, it's incredible, all right? Self-accountability, not having someone t t just, you know what? I'm going to read it and then we'll break it down. This is it. I do not choose to be a common man. It is my right to be uncommon. I seek to develop whatever talents God gave me, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dulled by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to barter incentive for a dull. I prefer the challenge of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the state stale calm of utopia. I will not trade freedom for beneficence, nor my dignity for a handout. I will never cower before any earthly master, nor bend to any threat. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud, and unafraid to think and act for myself, enjoy the benefit of my creations, and to face the world boldly and say, this, with God's help, I have done. All this is what it means to be American. Those are amazing words. Americans push forward and, and, do, and are uncommon and are proud to be uncommon. We don't, the whole, I mean, America was founded because we, they were, they were telling us do this and give us your money. And we're like, no, we're, we're going to do, we, the people decide what is done. You don't tell us what to do, right? We're, if, if we don't, we don't have representation over here, no taxation, right? No taxation without representation. Well, now we, the people, everyone's, everyone's talking about, uh, <laughs> The one word that I said, I see. Yeah, utopia is a lie, someone said. It is. They, You will own nothing and be happy. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, they want that. That's what they want. They want that kind of attitude. People are just b becoming sheep. It's ridiculous. Well, Alphonse died in 90, at 91 in Manhattan. A plaque of his letter stands unattributed in Hagerstown, Indiana, which is kind of lame. Because he, we should know his name, Dean Alfonch. What? Because he never got into office. He wasn't, you know, uh, given. He he wrote that, and it's it's amazing. I like that. I don't know. I just thought I, I read that, and I was like, you know, that's pretty cool. We shouldn't be kept a kept citizen. Yeah, that's they're trying to take our guns. They're trying to up the welfare. They're trying to bring in undocumented people it's it's just ridiculous the state of the world that we're in all right so now that i've said that right now that i've talked about that now i want to get into this story this story is a shame let me just start by saying it is a shame that someone has died it's always it's always a shame when someone dies before they're old and had had a wonderful life right my, I just dealt with a, a death in the family, my grandmother, but she was 92. She had an amazing life. She had a huge family of people that love each other. And it's, it's incredible. I, I look at her and I'm like, she was an incredible woman. 
you know, she didn't die too soon. She, she had an amazing life. I loved her, but she had an amazing life. So when someone dies, especially at the age of 16, and that's what's happened here, we had a young uh, human being that died too early. Now, the circumstances of this death, everyone seems to have their own ideas of it. She was about to stab someone else, and a cop made a decision to shoot her and stopped her from stabbing that person. And everyone exploded. It's racism. And it's like, I just, I, I don't understand how it could be racist when he's, he's saving somebody from being stabbed with a knife, regardless of race. I'm so sick of this race conversation. It's not race. He was save he was saving someone of the same race. It's that he he if he was racist he would have been like I don't care let them kill each other. But he wasn't. He was like he he reacted because she was about to stab someone else with a knife. It's ridiculous. Here's the story. All right, but I I like the way uh this is from Becker Becker News. All right, from Kyle Becker. Some people are like, "Oh, you can't really trust him." It's like, "Dude, he's this is quality work. Look at this. Explosive new security cam video shows Columbus officer saved girl in pink from being stabbed. That's that should be the headlines. Girl in pink saved from being stabbed by a by a hero cop. But no, we've got LeBron James going. You're next. Hashtag accountability. Really, LeBron? This man saved a, a girl's life. But but. If look, this is this is let me just give you a little pretext. Actually, it does it well here. Okay. All right. This follows earlier release that corroborates the officer who had already been doxxed, but whose name won't appear here, shot the assailant while she was armed with a deadly weapon and attacking an unarmed civilian. The police officer thus cl almost clearly saved the girl in pink from being stabbed. If the officer was racist, he would not have even risked his career to save the life of a black girl whom he didn't know while wearing a body cam. It's true, actually. So, supposedly, the woman who had the knife called the police, and they showed up, knowing that there was hostile stuff going on, so it was a situation. The girl with the knife barreled out and charged somebody, knocked him over. In the video... The cop tries to stop her from tackling the first person and she gets up and he realizes she has a knife. She turns around and runs at someone else to, and then rears back to stab the person and gets shot. So I, how is it racism? I, I don't understand. How is it racism? People are like, well, look at Kyle Rittenhouse. He, you know, he shot somebody. Well, it, it seems he was getting beat by a skateboard right before he shot in one of the in one of the shootings. I'm not gonna go for the rest, but or I think in that one it was self defense. You know, whatever happens with his trial is is irrelevant. Um, when they came to him, he surrendered. Right? He wasn't. Um, there wasn't cops right there, and if there was, he might have gotten shot. Who knows? But she was. In front of the police officer, about to stab someone, literally right in front of him. I have the I have a picture just to show you. This is from his body cam. This is her with a knife in her hand, about to stab this per this woman in pink. And then and then the the officer chose to shoot. Now I'm gonna remind everybody: this is a shame. It is a shame that someone got killed, but at the same time. He could have saved her life. A knife to the to the throat? This woman could have been dead. You know? Aren't they aren't cops supposed to protect and serve the citizens? Is that not what he was doing? Protecting an unarmed citizen? She was walking her dog. In fact, there's a video of her walking with a police officer that's leading her away from the scene. I shoot with a knife earlier. No, she just did. that's what the guy, that's what the police that, did. That lady she, came on the floor? At, she came after me with so, a knife. Yeah, so she so he got her. Okay, oh, this woman straight up said 
She was coming after me with a knife. That's why he did it. Because she was about to stab me. This woman is is could have been dead. So is it it's because of their color of their skin now suddenly it's racist because but he was saving someone of that you know that race look I, they're humans to me you know it's it's a shame that a human died but that human was attacking another human being a crowder made a good point he had a little segment on it he was saying like you you can't um yell out like hey are you are you of age are you over the age of 18 while you're attacking somebody with a knife they don't know they see someone about to stab someone else with a, with a knife. What what do they what do you think they're going to do? They're supposed to stop if they if he stood there and watched her stab the other person, they would have been like he's racist for just letting them stab each other. Which is it? LeBron James holding him accountable for actually saving someone's life? Which one is it? This is from Malcolm Flex. This it's, it's a sad, I just don't understand. Look, he had to post, he's like, got my first son or got my son, his first book. So he can have a normal childhood look like, like I did my first knife fight. Obviously this is messed up that they're it, so what the cop was supposed to let the woman stab the other girl, like, or excuse me, the girl stab the other girl. I don't know how old she was either. But she, it's a human life that was about to potentially be lost. I just, it's a shame. I, I'm sad that someone got killed. You know, but he was doing his job. And I think he saved that woman's life. You know, we have all these CNN articles coming out about how a uh, mother of black teen fatally shot by police wants the world to know uh, Ma Makia was beautiful. Okay. She also ran at someone about to stab them with a knife. It's like she can do that and, and she can. She she may have been beautiful. She may have, you know, it is a shame that she's gone. I agree. But she chose to attack somebody and it, with a with a blade in her hand, she could have caused fatal damage. And what co what choice did the police officer have? That's this is what I, you know, it's like, OK, had he just stood there, they would have claimed racism for him letting them kill it, letting her kill, uh, you know, a black person. He's like, oh, he he didn't care. It's like, let them kill their own. It's like, w w which is it? It's ridiculous. You know what? This this actually caught me off guard. You probably aren't going to believe this either. Lemon and Cuomo. They actually defended the cop. I I was speechless when I read this. Uh, shout out to Neo Unrealist who sent me this. I I I don't watch CNN. You know I, I see some of their articles, but this I I was like, wait a minute. And even look, the first paragraph is like, if I had simply read the transcript of what transpired between CNN Tonight anchor Don Lemon and News Prime or uh, Cuomo. Without knowing the names of the participant, I would never have guessed that if the, it was the two of them. Right. Listen to what they've said. I think this is from uh, Lemon. And the initial reports didn't seem right. And it was so interesting for me, as emotional and personal as the stories are, as someone of color, especially Don. Oh, okay. This is from Cuomo. You with your background, you are cautious about it. And you're saying, huh, I want to see this one. I want to see this because there's a lot of emotion, understandably. So you get a 16 year old kid that's gone. They're right. They're right. But they continue here. But what we've got to be fair about what happened when the police arrived at the scenes. It is tragic that a 16 year old, just as it's tragic about a 13 year old in Chicago, when police are chasing people, they don't know how old they are. They don't run and say, how old are you? I'm 13. You know, my mom let me, but you don't know that. Or I'm 16. They roll up on the scene and they see people tussling about. Someone has a knife. And it's their job to protect and serve. I, I'm shocked at what I'm hearing. Every life on that scene. And if they see someone who is in the process of taking a life. What is that decision? What decision that do they have to make? And I know that people will say. Well you know. You could have done this. You could do that. Tasers don't work the way guns work. It, yeah. They're single shot. I mean, they say a lot more and it's, they, they, what else? I, you know what? I'm, I can't, I don't know if I could play the clip. I'm just going to play it. I don't care. You know, we were 
you, know, you were really actually you were to be honest let's let the audience in do not know how to um, um somebody very angry well yes and we're dealing with a lot of emotion right now and i'm going to talk about that in a moment and i think that is um um it's real and you have to take that that part has to be taken in, into account there's a lot of anguish uh, people are very emotional right now but we've got to be fair about what happens when police arrive at scenes it is tragic that it's a 16 year old girl just as it is tragic that it's, they see someone who distance and, and now with that amount of time that yeah right tasers what, what is that decision what decision do they have to make and i know that people say well you know you could do this you can do that tasers don't work the way guns work not Tas at that not at that distance not at that distance and, and now with that amount of time that yeah right tasers then do, they don't always connect so you've got to get, you know, two prongs or what have you, and it's got to connect to whatever. Tasers don't work the same. They don't have, I mean, if he tased her, she probably, I mean, who knows? I, you know, it's not the same. You see somebody about to stab someone else. What do you do? You want to be in that situation? I don't. I, I don't, I can't imagine what it's like for that cop to even know that that girl's dead. I guarantee you, I guarantee it, that guy is so sad that he had he took that woman's life. Even if the, the woman in peak is like, he did it to save me, I know that that's why he did it. She said that. We've got her saying, like, she came at me with the knife, that's why he did it. Yeah, that is why. Do you think that he's he's at home? Go these, these people, on the on LeBron James, for example, accountability, you're next. He thinks that this cop went home and being like, ha ha, got another one. No, he's probably devastated. You think these people want to kill people? No, I, I will never believe that. It's a shame that this person died, period. You know what? LeBron had a good point here a long time ago. Because Listen I'm not up here saying that all police are bad because they're not. Um, because I'm not up here saying that all police are bad because they're not. They're not. not up here saying that all, you know, all kids are great and all adults are great because they're not. You're right. They're not. But at the same time, all lives do matter. And what, what was that, LeBron? Wait. Great because they're not. But at the same time, all lives do matter. And it's not. What? D did you hear that? It's just about it's not black or white. It's not. It's not that. It's, it's everyone. Um, wow. Here we have LeBron James. Of course, this is Eli Stein. Thank you for this. It says, hey, King James, meet King James. Right, because you're posting this stuff before you even know what's going on. Hey, this man saved a girl's life. Okay, you want to add race into it? Okay, sure. He saved a black girl's life. You want to you wanna do that. They, they add race as much as they can. Okay, if he took a life, he also saved a life. And here's LeBron saying all lives matter and not all cops are bad and not all kids are good. She's a 16 year old. Sure. She may have been beautiful. Yeah. You know, there's no, I'm sure the mother of course loved her and wrote a, a beautiful CNN piece about her life and how she's not around anymore. And it is a shame, but it's because she went to stab somebody in front of a police officer. Period. If she didn't go to stab that person, she probably wouldn't have been shot. That cop already brought her off of somebody. She tackled somebody in front of the cop. And he didn't shoot her. She, he, he got her off of him, uh, off of the person she tackled. And then she turned around and ran after someone else with a knife. What did you expect is going to happen? Period. What do you expect? It's insanity. I don't... Un <laughs> Look, even, this is rich, even O.J. Simpson hits LeBron James for Ohio cop tweet, slams media for portraying edited versions of the story. Oh, yeah. The news media, they said she didn't even have a knife on her. When it's very clear she does. She did. It's in the body cam footage. Where is it? I already had it up. This is the shot. This is the moment that he shot. He's got his, his hands in the air because she's about to stab somebody. There it is. It's a, it's a shame that this happened. No doubt. I'm, I'm, I wish she didn't try to stab that person. Because I feel like she may be alive still. Period.
You know, this is a shame. This is this is all the rage now. It's the new, you know, I it, I don't want to say new George Floyd, but they're trying to make it seem like this is it's just continuing systemic racism. That cop wasn't racist. He was defending an American citizen from another American. Well, they, potentially they're American citizens. It doesn't matter. Pro protecting a citizen from another citizen who was about to stab her with a knife. Don't stab somebody. Don't don't especially in front of cops. If a cop's there, I mean, period, don't stab someone. Like, stabbing people should be frowned upon always, right? I mean, you shouldn't stab people. That's just, I feel like that's an obvious thing that uh, most people shouldn't do. They don't do. They don't, you don't stab people, right? But if you stab, if you go to stab someone in front of a cop, what do you, I mean, it's not surprising. You know, knives can do way more damage than a gun in close range. Do you know that? They could pop, 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 get you. Seriously. And, and a cop, you, you know, pull. And it's like, you can always, uh, Mythbusters disproved this or, or proved it completely that a knife in a gun, bringing a knife to a gunfight, you know, that whole thing. Well, a knife most times will beat the gun because someone can close the distance before they even pull the gun out of the holster or shooting. By the way, shooting guns, hitting accurately. So many people, well, why didn't he shoot her in the leg and, and kill the dog, hit the person, the, the person in pink that he was saving, hit the person on the other side of the car. Maybe there was someone in the car, you know, or someone said, why didn't he just shoot in, shoot into the air? To, yeah. So she's rearing back to stab somebody and he shoots in the air a couple times. Yeah. That's going to stop her from killing someone else with the blade or let alone the bullet that goes flying out in the middle of nowhere that I'm fairly certain it's illegal to shoot up in the air uh, because who knows where that bullet's going to land? What if it kills a child playing in a playground? Hmm? These people love to think they have the answer to all these situations when they're not there before they even get the whole context of the situation because the reality is he saved that woman's life. All right? There it is. That's that's what I think. That's what I think. 